Um, if we could just focus in on those changes, um, you talked about a number of changes that have happened in the discipline and in the professional practice mm. of translation and interpreting. Mm. Um, could you maybe mention a few of those uh, that we could explore in a little more detail? Yeah. As far as the discipline is concerned, as I already mentioned, there are just far more training courses than there used to be. Um, and so this, this is a major change. In terms of the professional uh, world itself, and of course that is reflected in the kind of courses that are on offer, um, there is, for example, the shift towards uh, relying more heavily on visual material mm -hmm. and integrating visual and, uh, and verbal material in uh, things like um, newspaper material, promotional leaflets, um, the growth of audiovisual translation. Uh, today we are very much a visual culture and we the visual element uh, is almost always there. You never, you hardly ever now uh, translate uh, purely verbal stretches of text. There's always some, mm -hmm. verbal, uh, some visual element that you have to take on board. For example, a lot of translators now translate web pages which are very dynamic, which have moving pictures, which sometimes also have sound. Uh, and of course, the changes in technology as well have uh, supported this kind mm. of shift. Mm. Uh, and translators have to be far more versatile than they used to be in taking on board not just the, the textual stretches that they're translating, but the relationship between the text and the visual material, which uh, is part of what they're delivering. They have to uh, know how to work with technology. They have to uh, be able to work with a very different set of genre uh, from the mm. ones that uh, they worked with 10 years ago. And these are all things that I've tried to take on board and, uh, and are reflected in the second mm. edition.